What is up everyone? Today on this episode of Real Chemistry, we're talking about naming ketoses and aldoses. Ketoses and aldoses are both forms of sugar. So you see this table sugar down here. That turns out to be what's called sucrose, just one very particular form of sugar. But anytime you see the ending os, you know that you have a sugar. So os always means sugar. And ketose and aldose are two different categories of sugar divided by what functional groups we have present. So in this lesson, we're going to talk about a few important facts to know about sugars, particularly about ketoses and aldoses. And then we'll go into coming up with the systematic name for ketoses and aldoses. All right. First up, a few key facts. Whenever you see the word os or the ending os, that always means we got a sugar. Fructose, sucrose, glucose, galactose, lactose, aldose, ketose. That os ending always means sugar. Sugars will always have the formula CnH2nON. That means that the number of carbons and oxygens will match and that we'll have twice as many hydrogens as we do carbons or oxygens. So for example, glucose, probably the most important sugar, since it's your blood sugar, has the formula C6H12O6. Notice, in this case, that the number of carbons matches the number of oxygens, so that's good. And then the hydrogens is twice as many. So that matches that general formula. So that's a good formula for a sugar. On the other hand, if I had something like C5H10O10, this turns out to not be a good formula for a sugar because the number of carbons and oxygens don't match. So that's no good, okay? So we always need the number of carbons and oxygens to match and the number of hydrogens to be twice as many, okay? Last key fact here, about ketoses and aldoses is they're divided by their functional group. So any time that you have a ketose, you have a ketone present. And any time that you have an aldose, you have an aldehyde present. Let's remind ourselves of what ketones and aldehydes are. So here are two molecules. They're not sugars, but they are ketones and aldehydes. Here on the left-hand side, we have this C double O bond. And this is always the key bond we're looking at to decide if something is a ketone or an aldehyde. And we have that same bond over here on the right. Notice on the right, this is in the middle of the carbon chain. So if I count my carbons, I have one, two, three, four, five. And it's not on the end. If it was on carbon one or five, that would be on the end. Instead, it's on carbon four, which is in the middle. On the one on the left, two, three, four, five, it is on the end of the chain. So carbons five or one, again, would be the end of the chain. When we have the situation where the C double O bond is at the end of a chain, we have an aldehyde, okay? When we have a situation where the C double O bond is in the middle of a chain, we have a ketone. And that's the basis on which we divide ketoses from aldoses, the presence of an aldehyde or a ketone. Let's look at an example. Here, we have a C double O bond in, at the end of a chain, right? So where's our C double O bond? It's right here. Notice... There's no carbons this way after that carbon. So if we counted our carbons, we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. And it's on one of the ends of the chain. So what that means is that that sugar there, it is a sugar it turns out, contains an aldehyde and hence would be an aldose. So this guy is an aldose. By the way, you might get confused by looking at this big chunk of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen down here and be like, okay, is there a C double O bond there? What's going on? Whenever you see CH2OH, it's telling you there's another carbon with hydrogen on either side and with an OH on it. So that's more like an alcohol group hanging out. So it's not actually going to be either a ketone or an aldehyde from that functional group at the bottom. Just that functional group up top helps us categorize this sugar as an aldehyde. Let's take a look at what a ketose looks like. Here we see a C double O bond, and it falls, notice, right in the middle of our molecule. So here's our C double O bond, and it is in fact not on the end of the chain. And so that means this top guy would be a ketose. Okay, so that's how we generally divide sugars into ketose or aldoses. And there's a little more to that for coming up with a system that, systematic name for these sugars. Let's look at that. So when we name ketoses and aldoses, here are the steps we follow. We first identify the sugar as a ketose or an aldose. Then we count the carbons. To name that, we name it aldo or keto, depending on which functional group it has, plus whatever prefix we got, which is the number of carbons, and we add the ending os. Okay? So let's identify this sugar as a ketone or an aldehyde. So here we have the C double O bond. It's at the end of the chain. So that means we have an aldose. Okay, so this is categ the category of the sugar would be an aldose. Next up, we need to count the carbons. Let's do that. 
every single time we see a point where we have our bonds crossing, we have a carbon, just like in all of our organic molecules. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So don't forget that last carbon there at the end. And so we go to our chart over here, which basically you have to memorize, but luckily it's pretty straightforward to memorize. You may already have it memorized. For six, we see that we use the prefix hex, okay? So to name this, we're gonna start with aldo. So it's an aldo. And then we're gonna add the prefix. In this case, it's hex. And then we'll add os. So this is an aldo hexos. Each part of that name tells me something different. This tells me if I have an aldehyde or a ketone. In this case, I have an aldehyde. And the middle there tells me the number of carbons. And the end there just tells me, hey, it's a sugar. Okay? Now, of course, aldohexose uh, doesn't refer to just one exact sugar. There's many different aldohexoses. So it's kind of just a way to categorize our sugar by aldehyde or ketone and the number of carbons. Let's do one more example. Okay, so here we're going to identify the sugar as a ketose or an aldose. Because we have the C double O bond in the center of our chain, we know that this is a ketose. When we go to count the number of carbons, I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six. So once again, six sugars, or six carbons, I'm sorry, which is not an uncommon number to get for sugars. So we're going to name this keto plus the prefix, which is hex in this case, plus os. And I lied, we're going to do one more practice problem after this one. Maybe we'll have one that doesn't have six carbons. So here we once again start by identifying something as an aldehyde or a ketone. This is definitely an aldose. Notice that we have this C double O bond at the end of our chain. And when we count the carbons, we have one, two, three. So this name would be aldo triose because tri tells me that I have three carbons. Okay, thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry.